This was the scene six months ago in the Bahamas. That person in shorts is, of course, FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried, otherwise known as SBF. He's seen here with Bahamian Prime Minister Philip Davis, breaking ground at the site set for FTX's global headquarters. The arrival and presence of FTX underscores the readiness of the Bahamas to be a home for global leaders in the crypto space. But now, that land sits empty. The celebrated project abandoned. So what made the Bahamas so appealing to FTX in the first place? And what will happen to the nation's crypto hub status now that its biggest player has collapsed? The relationship between FTX and the Bahamas has, um, it's been interesting to watch. WSJ's Angel Ao Young went to Nassau to cover the fall of FTX. Obviously, the Bohemian government wanted companies like FTX to come to the Bahamas. And so it went about courting these companies. It was the first to issue its national currency in digital form. Sand dollar, the digital Bahamian dollar. It hosted a crypto conference presented by FTX. Welcome to the Bahamas. But most importantly, it enacted a comprehensive legal framework for digital assets like cryptocurrency. The Bahamas is a couple steps ahead than the U.S. of trying to create a regulatory environment for the industry. Um, and that really boils down to the DARE Act that was passed in the end of 2020. The Digital Assets and Registered Exchanges Act, or DARE, is intended to give firms like FTX clear rules to adhere to. Before a company, especially that's going to be a digital exchange, puts its headquarters in a country, you know, it wants to have certainty about how that country is classifying all these different products. That's attorney Bruce DeGaris, who's worked on Caribbean financial services matters and international white collar crime. The DARE framework he's talking about doesn't yet exist in the U.S., but regulation is something SBF has called for. The fact that FTX wanted to make their headquarters in the Bahamas, it gave legitimacy to the DARE Act, and the DARE Act gave legitimacy to FTX. However, having regulations and enforcing them are two different things. The Financial Action Task Force, a global financial watchdog, has previously put the Bahamas on its so-called gray list for increased monitoring. The country was only delisted two years ago. The Bahamas regulatory regime is not as harsh, and so most likely FTX was hoping or maybe even expecting that the Bahamas would not partially implement its DARE Act. Both FTX and the Securities Commission of the Bahamas did not respond to requests for comment. There's also how the country deals with taxes. Last month, the European Union added the Bahamas to its tax haven blacklist, which identifies jurisdictions that don't yet comply with all international tax standards. The country doesn't charge personal, capital gains, estate gift, or inheritance taxes. It also doesn't have corporate tax, unless that revenue is derived from within the Bahamas. The U.S. is um, known for having high personal income taxes, no matter where you live. I mean, you can move to some states and you might have a lower income tax rate, but um, nothing beats the Bahamas. So I can see why the Bahamas is a particularly attractive um, option to somebody like SBF, who has publicly stated that he wants to make as much personal money as possible to give back to various causes. Another thing the Bahamas has going for it, it's really close to the U.S., just about an hour flight to Miami. It's very helpful if you're a company like FTX and you want to attract U.S. business and you want to do business in the U.S., but yet you don't want to be subject to all the regulation and the, the tax regime. Fly about two hours further north, and there's D.C. SBF has become something of a regular on Capitol Hill over the last year even testifying before the Senate on crypto regulation. The uh, industry has the potential to improve a lot of people's lives. But now, with FTX's collapse, the decision to headquarter in the Bahamas is complicating its bankruptcy. FTX's new leadership is at odds with the country's regulators over who has control over billions in customer assets. Is it going to be the Bohemian authorities who have control of these assets um, for the liquidation process? Or will the SEC be involved? There are still really big questions on who is going to be responsible for holding FTX accountable. It's unclear yet how severely FTX's collapse will affect the Bahamas. 
but experts expect that it will harm the country and its reputation as a crypto hub. The fact that they've attracted the number three digital exchange and that it quickly went from success to bankruptcy has jeopardized the new product and the new innovation that the Bahamas has undertaken, unfortunately. FTX's collapse will likely force the Bahamas and other governments to look more closely at the crypto industry. For years now, every government has known that this is an issue that is not going to go away. But with this collapse, now that billions upon billions of customers' money has been lost, it's going to force these governments to enact um, an accountability framework much faster than they might have been willing to do previously. As for SBF, it remains to be seen what action, if any, the Bahamas might take against him.